Welcome to Explore the Way. In this video, I am going to explain by CMOS inverters. We already have bipolar inverter and CMOS inverters. Then why by CMOS inverter? Both bipolar and CMOS inverters have best features and some limitations also. In order to have the best features of both the technologies that is high driving capability and low power consumption by CMOS inverter is introduced. Let us draw the schematic diagram for by CMOS inverter. In by CMOS inverter it uses both CMOS and bipolar transistors. So here CMOS can be used to implement logic and BJT is used to increase driving capability. So BJT can be used for IO. Now the by CMOS inverter This is the schematic diagram of by CMOS inverter. Let us see the operation of this by CMOS inverter. Firstly, when the input is 0, what will happen? So here, here the input is at the gate which is 0 and the source is at VDD. So VGS for this PMOS transistor is 0 minus VDD which is equal to negative. So this PMOS transistor will turn on which drives this bipolar transistor T4. So this T4 also enter into conduction and when the input is 0 the VGS for this NMOS transistor T1 is 0. So here the transistor T1 will turn off so here no way to turn on this transistor T3. So T3 also turn off. So here T1, T3 turn off. T2, T4 will turn on. So as T2 and T4 are turned on, then what is its output? So here the output is equal to VDD minus drop across this transistor. So VDD minus here the voltage across this is VCA which is equal to VDD minus VCE which is equal to sum of these two voltages VBC and VBE. So here which is equal to VBC plus VBE. Here base is at VDD and collector is also at VDD. So the difference here VBC is equal to 0 and VBA, VBA for a bipolar junction transistor is 0.7 volts. So here the output voltage is VDD minus 1 VBA. Here V out is equal to VDD minus VBA when, when the input is 0 logically which is treated as high. For the given input 0 output is high. Coming to the next case. When the input equal to VDD or high, then what happens? So in this diagram, the gate is at VDD, source is also at VDD. So here the difference is VD, VGS is 0. Here T2 is turned off, thereby T4 also turn off. Coming to bottom transistors, when V in equal to VDD, the VGS for T1 is positive thereby T1 will turn on and which drives T3. So T3 also turned on. Here T1 turn on. T3 also turn on. Then what happened? Then what is the output voltage here? 
here the output voltage is the drop across the transistor T3. So here when the transistor here it is in on state here the voltage is VC is set. So here the output voltage is VC set. So which is equal to nearly 0.2 volts. Okay actually which is 0 but due to this transistor here it is 0 plus VC set which is equal to 0.2 volts. When the input is 0 output is logically 1 but its value is VDD minus 1 VBE. And when the input is 1 output is logically 0 and its value is VC set. So in both the cases it satisfies good logic levels. Its values also close to supply rails but not exactly VDD and the ground but its values are close to supply lines. This is the bi CMOS inverter but it has some drawbacks. What are the drawbacks? So coming to the diagram when the input is VDD the transistor T1 will turn on thereby T3 will turn on. So there is a low resistance path from VDD through T1 through this T3 to the ground. So this is the low resistance path from VDD to ground that is the first drawback. So thereby there is some static power dissipation. Second one, when the transistors T, T3 and T4 are turned on, there is no discharge path for, the, for these two transistors. These two are the drawbacks with this BiCMOS inverter. In order to overcome these drawbacks, the BiCMOS inverter can be modified. Thank you.